Uh, wow, I've never had an international introduction. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I never realized when I was making up this crazy book that it would somehow you know, work as a diplomat for the two countries <laughs> to get together to read something. So uh, um, I'm really uh, I'm kind of tickled by that. And um, so I'm going uh, to read from this book, and I'm going to try to explain how it came to be. Um, but I also wanted to kind of explain my Canadian experience on this book, because that's been uh, kind of fun and unusual in itself. Before the book came out, um, my, public, um, my, my publisher in Toronto had me in Toronto uh, for a dozen interviews in two or three days with uh, television, uh, print, and radio. And, and I've always been kind of allergic to the idea of going on television, so I, I always swore that I wouldn't allow anybody to put makeup on me. And uh, I don't know, for whatever reason, I thought I was going to draw some kind of line. And so uh, I went on Canada AM, um, you know, and had to travel across the country, and I was, I was jet lagged and all that. And, and I was going to hold the line on, on no makeup, and then suddenly they say, okay, makeup. And I said, okay. And I, and, and I went into the back room, and they put all this orange powder all over me. I, mean, I don't know if you've ever seen what that's like, but uh, I didn't even recognize myself when I looked in the mirror. And then I got out there um, and sat next to this guy. Uh, who, who ran, ran the morning show, and then they rushed out when they're having the countdown. It's going 10, 9, 8, and they rush out and pour more powder on me because I was shining too much. <laughs> and, uh, and it just struck me as the, as the most difficult way to make a simple conversation challenging. <laughs> you have to put all this powder on you, and you suddenly have to have these candid few minutes. And, then, uh, and so it, it was funny to me also that, that uh, Canadian press took such interest in this book. Um, because I'd written a lot as a, as a journalist about the border and, and issues about the border, and I'd never really had any Canadian press call for comment. And so now I make something up, and, uh, <laughs> and, and suddenly I've got all this, this pressure and, uh, and all, all these questions. And, and, um, and the Toronto press, the, uh, Canada TV there, really seemed to take an interest to the whole marijuana side of the book. And so they interviewed me in a, in a head shop, a marijuana head shop, so that there's you know, pipes and bongs and marijuana leaves behind my head, and all of which seemed a little nutty. And then, and then uh, this, this whirlwind in Toronto peaked with a, with a um, Toronto book group of about 20 women who who'd read Border Songs. And this was before it came out, so I was really interested to hear what they had to say. And, and, and the feedback was all good, except uh, there was this odd moment when an argument broke out as to whether or not my uh, main Canadian character, uh, Wayne Rousseau, is too rude to be a Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> and they finally, they finally, and so the argument went back and forth where some people said, no, I, there's one of him in every cocktail bar <laughs> who's, who's slamming America. And, and, uh, and then finally they all concurred that well, while he's not your typical Ontario man, he is more of a BC man. <laughs> so that, that's their impression of you people. Anyway. Um, and so, uh, so this, this, book, this book came out of my reporting initially. That's what, that's what gave, me the, uh, gave me the idea for it. It, it, grew out of, it grew out of the setting. And, and as a kid, I used to come up into Canada and play soccer. And, we, you know, and I'd go back and forth. And it always struck me as... as um, a little bizarre that you had to go through such a formal crossing to get into a country that looked very much like the one I'd left and, and the people looked very much like the people I'd left and, and I just couldn't quite figure out why it was such a big to-do. Um, and then I came up as a reporter after 9-11 and, uh, and, and I saw how, how dramatically the, the setting had changed, particularly south of the border, in that it's like this invisible fence had shot up between the two countries. And, and people didn't wander over and, and help each other, uh, you know, plow their fields. And, and the whole valley out there between, uh, you know, Peace Arch Park and, and the Cascades had suddenly just, there was this tension there. And they, and they tripled the Border Patrol. And, um, and so I was riding around with the Border Patrol, and, and that's when I saw them catching incredible amounts of um, uh, BC bud that was headed south, and all, and all, and so they had all these storage rooms full of marijuana, and, uh, and they kept saying, "Well, you know, we, we did triple the, the border patrol to stop the terrorists from coming down, but you know, there doesn't seem to be that much Canadian aggression coming down." And, uh, um, and, and it just struck me that that, uh, that this is pretty odd. This is a this is a bizarre little battlefront out here on on the war on drugs and the war on terror. And, uh, and the more I started doing research about it, the more interesting it got. Just, just kind of the whole 
the, the, the bizarre selection of the 49th parallel from uh, you know, the Great Lakes all the way out to, to the coast out here and, and how hard it is to even keep that border defined. You know, so I found these reports that showed that no matter how much they you know, chainsaw and weed whack, it, that they can't keep this thing delineated. And so, um, and, and then I was riding around with the Border Patrol agents who kept saying, you know, we only catch the stupid ones, there's no way to really guard this border. And so it all suddenly struck me that despite all the tension, that, that there actually was kind of some comic elements to uh, what were going on here. And so uh, that's, what, that's what put me in the direction of what I was, uh, ended up writing. And, um, and when I was initially doing it with, with the Border Patrol agents, I was doing it as a journalist, and they were very, uh, very tight-lipped about what, what they were doing and uh, didn't, didn't share all that much with me. But then I came back as a novelist, and they just opened up and, and started sharing all kinds of things to me that I didn't even think they should be sharing. And, and, it, was, and it was really like they were auditioning for roles all of a sudden. And as a writer, that's, that's what you're hoping for. You're just hoping for that kind of, that kind of just wide-open candor. And so then my research also included talking to... Um, marijuana smugglers in, in Abbotsford, who, who I came across, who they basically said they're, they're friends and people they knew smuggled, but they, they didn't smuggle. But they were happy to tell me all the details about it and show me the websites where you got all the tips on when to smuggle where. Um, and then also just the fact that there was so much uh, dairy farming out there, I felt like I needed to um, you know, show that and, and reflect that. And so I spent time on dairy farms down south just to get a feel for for dairy farming, and, and one of the uh, one of the things I was proudest of about this book is that I, I somehow made uh, drama out of dairy farming. I don't, I don't know that any reporters ever bothered to try to do that, but I, I did. Um, 